Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading Nanita's Big World. Nanita's Big World, the true story of a deaf pygmy marmoset. So look, here's a little pygmy marmoset and this is going to be a true story of a real pygmy marmoset. And this pygmy marmoset is deaf. Does anyone at home know what the word deaf means? That means they cannot hear. So some animals are born not being able to hear and some people like us aren't, are born not being able to hear. This is the story of Nanita and it's written by Sarah Glenn Marsh and illustrated by Stephanie Pfizer Coleman. Let's see what happens in Nanita's Big World. This is Nanita, a pygmy marmoset. A pygmy marmoset Piggy marmosets are the smallest monkeys in the world. But that's not all that makes Nanita special. When Nanita was born, she opened her eyes for the first time and saw beautiful trees, ferns, and flowers. She smelled sweet orange blossoms and the musk of her mother's fur. She yawned and tasted warm air on her tongue but she couldn't hear the squawking parrots on the branches overhead. She couldn't hear the buzzing of mosquitoes and dragonflies. She couldn't even hear her parents' voices. Nanita was born deaf. Her parents left her when she was just three weeks old. Nanita was scared. She didn't know how to find food for herself or how to groom her fur. She saw other marmosets scurrying around the nature sanctuary, but she couldn't understand what they were trying to tell her. But she didn't know how to ask for help. Nanita felt so alone. But then something wonderful happened. Kind humans brought Nanita inside and she found herself in a cozy new nest of her very own. She even got a cuddly toy that kept her warm. Does anyone else have a cuddly toy at home they like to snuggle with? This is Nanita's, looks like a polar bear. <laughs> Nanita didn't hear, need to hear the voices of the humans to know that she was safe now. Love wasn't a sound, love was a warm blanket and ropes to climb on. Every day, someone groomed her pretty fur with a toothbrush. The bristles felt like her mother's claws. Nanita loved her toothbrush massage. Nanita also loved to eat. She saw the other marmosets happily nibbling on bugs and lizards, but she liked smooth yogurt and lumpy rice pudding. Fluffy whipped cream was her favorite. Me too. When she wasn't gobbling down tasty treats, curious Nanita scurried and hopped through her new surroundings. Every table was a mountain to be climbed. Every smell was an invitation for adventure. Some days, Nanita was a treasure hunter, always spotting something new and shiny with her sharp eyes. Can you see anything that Nanita might see? I think I see a butterfly and a coin on the ground. Do you see the butterfly here and the coin down there? She was a brave explorer, getting lost in the tall grasses, peeking inside dark and spooky caves. Sometimes when she was following her nose to interesting new places, Nanita wished she had a marmoset friend to share her adventures with but she couldn't hear the other marmosets inviting her to play. As Nanita grew up, the world outside still looked huge, bursting with new things to discover. And one day it was time to trade in her old nest for a bigger, better one. But there was someone else in the new nest already, another pygmy marmoset who was almost as little as she was. Nanita wasn't sure what to think about Mr. Big at first. He moved his mouth a lot, but she couldn't understand him. Then Mr. Big sat beside Nanita in her favorite flower pot. Without even hearing his voice, 
Nanita understood what he was telling her. He wanted to be friends. Look, he's sharing a bug with her. A bug to eat. Soon Nanita realized that her new friend liked to do the same things she did. Eat, climb things, and play. And while Nanita couldn't hear his chatter or whisper secrets to him, she could climb as high as he could and jump just as fast. Nanita's world would always be silent, but that meant she noticed things that other marmosets often missed, like colorful creatures even smaller than she was. Do you see all the tiny creatures here? Looks like butterflies. Butterflies. Nanita still liked to swing in and check on her human friends from time to time, and she still loved her toothbrush more than anything else. That does look like it feels really good. But she was happiest when she was outside exploring with Mr. Big, the marmoset friend she'd always wanted. Now, love is sharing treats and napping in the same hammock. There's a big world surrounding Nanita's new nest and she's ready to climb, see, and taste it all. As long as she still gets to curl up with her toothbrush at the end of the day. <laughs> the end. Great listening, everyone. So that's the true story of Nanita and Mr. Big, her friend. And I'm just going to read a little snippet from what they have in the back for information. Nanita means little girl in Spanish, and it's fitting for such a tiny creature. As a baby, Nanita was smaller than a person's thumb. Can you hold up your thumb and see how big that is? She was smaller than a person's thumb. As a full grown marmoset, she still fits easily on the palm of a person's hand and weighs only about as much as 15 jelly beans. That's a good way to measure things. 15 jelly beans. She lives at the Rare Species Conservatory Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization located in Florida. Nanita and her parents are part of the efforts to help the pygmy marmoset species. She was born in 2012 as part of the captive breeding program, which aims to conserve species that may not otherwise survive in the wild. So she lives in a special home that creates wildlife, but it's protected. So it has a lot of wildlife enclosures but they're created to protect rare species that need help to survive. And she is one of them, being a pygmy marmoset. So pygmy marmosets families typically live as groups of a mother, father, and several siblings. When a new marmoset is born, the father carries the baby on his back for the first two weeks of its life. Older siblings help carry the younger ones to learn how to be good parents themselves one day. Pygmy marmosets love rivers, rainforest, and bamboo thickets. They need plenty of hiding places because of their small size, but they never, stay, they never stray too far from the same few trees during their entire lives. The end. So there's lots of other facts about pygmy marmosets and more about the story of Nanita in the back of this book if you want to check it out. And you can also learn more about their foundation to learn about the other animals that they are working on saving. So this is the story of real life deaf pygmy marmoset Nanita. I hope you enjoyed today's story and I hope to see you all soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.